Let's read it together. Are you ready? We're going to read down to verse 6. Now when John heard in prison what the Christ was doing, he sent a message through his disciples and asked him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor are told the good news. And blessed is the one who isn't offended by me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now. Thank you for your word. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to all of us. I have something I've prepared. But God, as I begin to speak, I know you're going to be preaching to me and the Holy Spirit's going to be speaking to me. And I pray, God, the same for those who are in here. And Lord God, I pray for those who aren't saved today, God, that they would say yes to you, that they would surrender their life totally and completely to you. We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, help me to preach. Help me to teach. It's not a gifting. It's not a talent. It's a calling. And so, God, I can't do what you call me to do without your anointing and without your hand upon me. So, God, I pray that you would help me today. Say exactly what you would want me to say. Nothing more or nothing less. And I pray for those in the congregation today that they would hear what you're saying. God, hear what you're speaking. Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? You may be seated. Here we read of John the Baptist in prison. He's locked up. He's in jail. And he asked a question that we just read. Are you the one that was supposed to come, or should we look, are y'all okay? Or should we look for another? I want to take you back to the very first meeting we see with John the Baptist and Jesus. John the Baptist and Jesus. You find this in Luke chapter 1, verse 41. Do you, did you know John the Baptist was... Jesus' cousin. We read that this is the first encounter Jesus would have with John the Baptist. Now I want you to listen. The Bible says that Mary went into the house of Elizabeth. And Mary now has Jesus inside her womb. Uh, Elizabeth has John the Baptist inside her womb. They're both pregnant. And when Mary walks in and greets Elizabeth, the Bible says, and I think this is amazing, the Bible says that the baby John, who was in Elizabeth, the baby leaped inside of her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. I think that's amazing. I mean, I think that's, I think that's awesome. This is the first contact they have. This is the first uh, of where we read of Jesus and John the Baptist. Even John knew then uh, something was special about Jesus. It wasn't about Mary. If you pray to Mary, you ain't prayed to nobody. If you worship Mary, you ain't worshiping anybody. Mary was just a woman. Mary was just someone that God chose, a lowly servant that God would choose so that he would get the glory because nobody would have picked Mary. Nobody would have chosen Mary. Nobody would have said, I think, I think Mary should carry the King of kings and the Lord of lords. No, nobody would have chose her. And I thank God God is still choosing people nobody else would choose. Amen? I'm so thankful that he chooses people like me. And people like you, amen? And so this is the first dealings we see with John, their uh, uh, the first mention of them together. 
Then we read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, we know now that God has called John the Baptist to begin to prepare the way for Jesus to come. So John is out preaching. What is he preaching? He's preaching, repent. We kind of talked a little bit about this Wednesday. He's preaching, repent. But what was he saying? He's saying, repent, change your mind. That's what the word repent means. Change your mind because the way you've been doing things is not the way things are going to continue to be done. Speaking of the law, speaking of, of the, the commandments, that, uh, trying to earn righteousness by, by keeping the law, he said, listen, there's coming a new king, there's coming a new way, and you need to repent. Not repent of sin, re repent of the way you're thinking. Change your mind, get ready, because there's a king coming, and he may not look like what you expect him to look like. He may not even say what you're expecting him to say, but when you see him, fall down on your knees, worship him, and wherever he goes, follow him. This was the message John had. Repent for the kingdom. Listen, the kingdom of heaven has come near. It's right around the corner. There's a coming a king, and he's going to establish a kingdom. And if you don't understand, you are part of that kingdom this morning. He's raising up the kingdom is the church, those who are, were born into sin, but they have placed their faith in Jesus, and they have been made righteous. And now you are part of this kingdom. And so here we see John the Baptist. He, there's a calling on his life. He knows something. He knows the status quo is not going to work, and he's bold enough to begin to tell people, even people who would hate him for it, even want to kill him for it, he was bold enough, he knew what he believed, he knew he heard from God, he had a message, hey, get ready, there's coming a king. This sounds like to me it was settled down in his spirit. He wasn't scared or worried what people might think. John was radical in his preaching and in what he believed. And nobody could sway him. He knew what he knew. He believed what he believed. And I say it often, and I'll say it for John. You may not believe what John believed, but before you left hearing him talk, you would believe he believed what he believed. You knew he knew what he knew. And nobody could change his mind. And then in John chapter 1, verse 26 through 30. Four, we read of John continuing to preach about there's coming a king. Now we read where John is baptizing them. He's saying, do you repent? Are you going to change your mind? Are you going to look for, look for this king that I'm preaching about? And then they'd say, yeah. And he'd say, well, I'm going to baptize you then, baptize you in water. And he would baptize them in water. And this meant to them, this was a symbol to, to, for, for everybody around them, hey, they're going this way. They're looking for a king. The status quo is over. It speaks of a repentance in their mind and in their heart. They were ready to see this king. One day John the Baptist is baptizing people. And he wipes the water from his eyes. And he sees a man coming down, walking alongside the Jordan. He says, behold, wait just a minute. Stop what you're doing. Hey, they want to get baptized. Hold on just a second. Everybody turn over there and look. The one I've been preaching about, the one I've been saying, he's coming. I'm changing my message. He's not coming. He's here. Behold the Lamb of God. They turn around and they look. There wasn't much to look at. There wasn't nothing to look about Jesus and think, oh, yeah, he's a king. Oh, no, he looked like everybody else. But John said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of of the world. Notice it didn't say cover. Notice it didn't say uh, kind of put to the side. Notice it didn't say make a better person out of you. Notice what he said. He come to take away the sin of the world. Take it away. Remove it. 
He knew this. He celebrated this. If you look up in verse 26, it says the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. He said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. There's verse 26, thank you. He said, I baptize with water. But there's someone who stands among you. You don't know him. But he's the one coming after me. He's speaking of Jesus. Whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to untie. And all of this happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. John, what, am I, what am I trying to say? John knew who Jesus was. He had heard from God. He had made up his mind. He was willing to give his life for this message. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Change your mind about how it's always been. There's coming a new king with a new way. You couldn't tell John, are y'all listening? You couldn't tell John nothing. That's what we say down here. You couldn't tell him nothing. He knew what he knew. He had heard from God. But then we get to this passage that we just all read together. John's now in prison. Put it back up there. He's now in prison. This is, I'm talking about Matthew chapter 11. He hears what Christ is doing. What was he doing? Well, we, we, read, we read it. He's healing the sick. Those who have leprosy are being healed. Those, those, uh, those who are sick with other diseases, deaf, uh, blind, uh, the deaf can hear, the blind can see, even the dead are raised. But John's in prison. And this man who had made up his mind about Jesus, all of a sudden, where do we see, man? What is he saying? The Bible says, in verse 3, he asked, he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you really the one? That's amazing. He was just preaching, just declaring, here's the Son of God. Behold, look, the Son of God that takes away the sin of the world. And now he's in a hard place. Now he's in a tough place. He's in prison. And he asked the question. He begins to doubt. Is this really who I thought he was? Or did I miss it? How many of you have thought that in here? You find yourself, I mean, you are screaming from the mountaintops. I know who Jesus is. I know him. But you get down in a bad place. I'm not talking about you got a hangnail. I'm talking about something serious. Something you can't make sense of your own. He doesn't do exactly what you wanted him to do. That's what John was saying. I, okay, you're healing the sick, you're raising the dead, but I'm in prison. Don't you remember? It was me who was telling the people before you ever came that you were coming, and when you came, they were ready for you. And now I'm in prison. Should I be looking for another? Have you ever asked that question? Maybe I got this wrong. Maybe, I mean, I can't make sense of this. I've done what I'm supposed to do. Lord, I'm your child. But here I am in prison. See, here was the problem. Jesus wasn't doing things exactly like John wanted him to do it. What happens 
if Jesus don't do it just like you want him to do it? Are you going to be okay? See, I ain't, I ain't raising no wimps. I ain't shepherding no wimps. Everybody can worship the Lord and praise God, sing songs, live for God when everything's going good. But what about when things don't go good? See, this is what separates us from the rest of the world. What happens when your man don't get voted in? What happens when it don't go like you think it should go? Are you going to give up and quit? What happens if you get the diagnosis and you've been pleading the blood and you've been praying and you've been anointing yourself with all so much you can slide right through the door and slide right out the door and you still don't see the healing? What you going to do? Will you start to look for another? See, I've been doing this long enough now to know that many go and look for another. Yes, they, do. they go and off and they look for another. And you say, well, I wouldn't do that. Would <laughs> well, you know what Jesus would say about John? You just heard all that doubt. But just right, just a few scriptures later, Jesus would say, there is no greater prophet than John the Baptist. I'm going to help you with your doubt a little bit. He knew we would doubt. He knew there was, a, there was a, this humanity side of us that would question and would wonder, when, especially when things didn't go just like we thought they would go and work out like they, we thought they would work out. I love the scripture in the Bible of the man who said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. And I've been there. I don't know if you've been there. And it's okay if you've been there. Lord, I believe with all I can believe. You said you got to have a mustard seed, and that's all I got. I got half of a mustard seed today. I just got a grain of a mustard seed, a part of a mustard seed. But Lord, I'm going to mix it. I'm going to take what little I've got, and I'm going to mix it with you. I may not understand it. Everything may be screaming around me. Try another. Look for another. My friends may be telling me, give up. Try something else. But I know, God, what you said. I know who you are. I refuse to change my mind. If it feels good, great. But if it don't feel good, I'm still going to follow after you. I'm going to take up my cross. I'm going to be who you called me to be. Forsaking all others. Forsaking all others. Our problem is we consider the fact there could be another. So we jump into relationships. I've never seen so many blessings from the Lord that took so many people out of church. Claiming it to be a blessing. I've never seen so many blessings Take people away from their relationship with the Lord. What happened? They were looking for another. Maybe I can find it in this relationship. Maybe I can find it in this job. Maybe I can find it here. Maybe I can find it there. No. Maybe if the Lord has you in prison, you just sit in prison. Maybe... Maybe if the Lord's got you where you're at and, and you've prayed and you've asked the Lord to deliver you, maybe he's just trying to develop you. Maybe he's got you there for a reason. Well, I don't believe God would allow his children to suffer. Have you always been that stupid or did you something you just stumbled across? You just... Because he will. You don't have to look any further than the apostles. Are you greater than the apostles? He allows the suffering of his children. 
I know this ain't popular. But you're living in a world where the gospel ain't popular anymore. And if the gospel that you preach promises nothing but good, promises nothing but roses and chocolates and no pain, well then, you're going to confuse a lot of people. You're going to bring reproach against this word. The promise has never been, everything's going to be great. The promise has always been, and the end. It's all going to work out for your good and his glory. Some of us want to have a revival in the White House. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Until there's a revival in the church house. <clears throat> and I still don't know that it will happen. Because this world, this system of this world, is evil and wicked. Man gets involved and they mess it all up. Oh, pastor, I thought you were going to tell me some good news today. Give us a Christmas message. Even Jesus was born in a stable. There was no room for him. Against all odds, he was born. And then a king wanted to kill him. Yet God made a way. He always makes a way. He doesn't do it the way we want him to do it, but he always makes a way. John thought, when are you going to deliver us from this Roman oppression? Jesus wasn't interested in doing that. He wanted to see those pick up his cross and follow him even in tough circumstances. I want to ask you this morning, are you offended by the way God's doing things? This is real. This is real. You may not want to admit it, but it's real. I deal with people every day who are offended by God. They're offended because it didn't work out like they thought it was going to work out. I mean, they're not going to tell you right off, right off the bat they're, God's offended them and they're a little mad, but there is a lot of people, even people in this building right now, and you are offended because Jesus hadn't done it the way you wanted him to do it. I've been praying for my children, and my children still ain't living for the Lord, and that you're a little offended about it. I'm preaching. I've been going to church all my life, living for the Lord and reading my about Jesus, and there's some things I've been praying about, and you haven't done it. My husband still ain't saved. My wife still ain't saved. My children still aren't living for God. They're still out there strung out. He's not doing it the way and when you would want him to do it. You're offended by it. That's what John, that's, that's what Jesus was telling John. That's what he was telling us. I may not do it the way you want me to do it, but blessed are those who aren't offended by me. That word offended means stumble. Those who don't stumble over me because I may not do it just like they want me to do it. I may not do it just like you want me to do it, but I know things you don't know. I know things you don't know. I understand things you don't understand. And you can't see the big picture, but I can. Amen. 
You don't understand what I'm doing. You're so consumed with you that you think this all evolves around you. But I can bless you if you wait in such a way that it won't just affect you, but it'll affect generations to come. Let me do what I'm doing. Blessed are those who are not offended by the way I want to do it. Well, I'm not married yet. Another Christmas comes around and everybody's getting engaged. It's real, y'all. You want to get engaged? <laughs> I wasn't even talking to you. I was talking to her. She was saying, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> but there's some who do. They long for a spouse. Some of y'all forgot what that's like because you've been married so long. But they long for a spouse, for a companion. They're raising children on their own. They're missing them. The wife, the woman is missing that father figure in the home. And that's tough. And they're trying to live a holy life when everything out in this world is saying, Go ahead and whore around. Marriage is out of style anyway. And there are plenty who are all in your DMs. That's direct messages. (laughs) Some of y'all thought I just spoke in tongues and interpreted it. (laughs) DM, DM. Somebody give him the interpretation. (laughs) Direct message. Direct message. It's all out there. It's hard to live holy and single. We got people in this church right now, women and men, who are living for God, single. And it's hard. And they're mad. Not maybe not mad, but they're a little offended because, Lord, you hadn't given me my man yet. <laughs> well, that's, well, sir, then the man you haven't given me my my woman yet, and that's real. Where's my single people at? Say that's real. I act like I'm telling a story right here. We're going to start a new ministry today. I feel like the single and sanctified. (laughs) I said ministry now. I didn't say hook up. And they're offended. And they're offended. Have you ever been there? But here's a condition now, a conditional promise. Blessed are those who don't understand, don't really like it, yet aren't offended, are still trusting and believing God. See, there's a promise that says, there's a promise in Galatians chapter 6 that says, do not grow weary in well-doing. Let me say it like this. Don't grow weary in sanctified living. 
Don't grow weary in doing what's right in a wrong world. Don't grow weary in living for God when everybody else seems to be living for themselves. Don't grow weary in serving the Lord. Don't grow weary in seeking Him first because in due season, at the right time, nobody will be able to take it away from you. Nobody will be able to pry it out of your hands. It wasn't you. It was God. And in the right time, you will reap a harvest if you faint not. Blessed are those who aren't offended by me. There are some people in this building, you don't know their stories. I do some. And I marvel at their worship. Because I would probably be offended. I marvel that every time they lift their hands and they praise the Lord. And I'm having a bad day. Something didn't go like I thought it should go. And I'm in here thinking about it. And I look over to my left or I look over to my right and I see them praising the Lord. And I think, what am I doing? Experience such great loss. Yet... Living in this way, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I love a Lord that gives. But sometimes He takes away. Are you going to be offended? There's a great blessing that comes. And this blessing doesn't just come to you, but this blessing affects others. I just said it. I'm all in my feelings one Sunday, and I look at you. You don't know I'm looking at you. You don't even know what I'm thinking. You didn't even know I was in my feelings. Yet I look at you, and I see you worshiping the Lord, and I see you praising God, and it ministers to me. You're, in, you're, you're like John. You're in prison, if you understand what I'm saying. You're in prison, yet you're still praising Him. You, everything, you don't have your mind wrapped around it all. You still don't have all the answers, but you chose not to be offended. You chose not to stumble over it. You chose chose to continue to trust Him. And that's a testimony to saints. But it's a testimony to this world. They've been through so much. Yet they're praising God. They're still caught up with this man named Jesus. I thought that last thing that happened to them would cause them, I thought it, I, it would surely prove that their faith was fake. But there they are, still praising God. There they are, still reading this Word. There they are with this attitude. Where will I go? You're the only one with the words of eternal life. And this is a testimony to the church. This is the light of the world. This is the light of the world. This is the city set up on a hill. This is the testimony that's went through a test. It's went through trial. It's went through affliction, yet remained faithful, remained in their faith. This is a testimony of the saints. This is what draws the lost, the hurting and the broken. Keep your, si your mouth silent if all you've got is a faith, that you, a faith that works when everything's going good. But friends, if you've got a faith that's been tested, if you've got a faith that's been through hell, if you've got a faith that's been up and been down, if you've got a faith that's walked in victory and went through some seasons, of defeat, I'm telling you, you've got something to tell. You've got a story to tell. You've got a life to live. And I'm telling you, many will come to the Lord because of your story. Yeah, but he died. 
Now I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying, right? Yeah, but he died. And I'm mad. Yes, yeah, she died. And I'm upset. God understands all of that. And you don't have to wrap your mind around it and figure it out because it won't never make sense to you. It, I, there's nothing I can say. There's nothing someone else can say to make it make sense. But there comes a blessing. When you learn to trust Him. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take Him at His word. Just to rest upon His promise. Just to know, thus saith the Lord Jesus. Jesus, I'll sing it now. How? I'm sorry, I'm, you can sing it. I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Through it all, Brother Rod, do you mind coming up here and play? How many songs do you guys sing for you come up here? <laughs> Through it all. I've been offended sometimes. I ain't gonna lie. I have. I have been offended in the faith. Have y'all? I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all. Oh, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His work. That's the verse. You know that verse, Rod? The lyrics? I've had many somethings. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Do you have another verse? I've been to lots of places. Stayed longer than I should have. I've seen lots of faces. There have been times I felt so all alone. But in my lonely hours, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I'm His own. It soothes, it soothes my doubt. And calms all my fears And it dries all my tears Oh, it's the blood that gives me strength
stands and calms all my fears. And it cries all, all my tears. It's the blood that gives me my strength. So what you got to do is you got to do what John said. Stand with me all across the building. You got to do what John said. Change your mind. You're wrong. You're wrong. That's what John said. I'm, I'm talking to somebody, so you need to be still just for a moment. You had no right to be offended. You were wrong. He was right. You were wrong. I know how you felt. Been there. But you was wrong. You got offended. But he is right. And there's a great blessing, and you might as well experience it right now during this Christmas season where he won't just give you something good. You might as well go ahead and say, I don't understand it. I'm, I'm not going to hold this offense any longer. I'm going to quit stumbling over what I've been stumbling over. I don't get it, but I know you're right. I know you're right. I know you're right. This morning right now you say, Pastor, this word was for me. I needed this word, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to change my mind about the way I've been thinking. I'm going to quit being offended because I know there's a blessing that comes. There's a blessing that comes if I won't be offended. If I, even if I don't understand what you're doing, God, I know if I'll just trust you, there's a blessing that's going to come from this. You say, that's me, Pastor. That word's been speaking to me. Lift your hand right now all over this building. Lift it up. Anybody? 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 That's the word for me, Pastor. That's the word for me today. And we're going to pray. Could you take the hand of the person next to you? Or you can just put your arm around them or whatever. If you don't know them, it's okay. It's right where you're at. You don't have to cross the whole building. We're going to pray for our brother and sister. They might be offended today and hurt and raw and real right now as, we're pre they, as I've been preaching, but you need to help them pray today. You can help them pray. So I want you to pray for that person beside you right now. Pray that they would change their mind. They may have been offended. You may have been offended. But God... I'm going to trust you. Can we pray? Let's do it right now. Pray for your neighbor. Right now, pray. You pray. Pray, saints. Pray. Come on, lift your voice and begin to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, I may not understand it all. But I choose to trust you, Lord. I choose to trust you, God. I choose to trust you, Lord. Forgive me, Father, for where I've doubted. Forgive me, Father, for, where, for, the, for the times I'm, I was mad. 
I'm sorry, Lord. Things hadn't went as fast as I wanted them to go. God, the things in the church hadn't went as fast as I thought they should go, God. Things didn't work out just like I thought they would work out, Lord. Forgive me, Father, for being offended. For, for being mad because you didn't do it the way I wanted to do it. I wanted it to be done. Forgive me, Father. May I trust you, God, even when it don't make sense. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Church, right now, just begin to praise Him right now. Come on, begin to praise Him right now. Just lift up your hands and begin to praise Him. There's some healing right now can take place. Church, lift your hands and just begin to praise Him right now. There's a healing that's going to take place in the hearts of men and women. Right now, lift your hands all over the building and begin to praise Him. Lord, I praise You, Father. I pray out of hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. I know it's painful. Praise Him anyway. I know it's painful. Praise Him anyway. The Lord gives and the, but the Lord and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. I bless you, God. I bless. Come on, praise Him. Oh, I praise you, Lord. I bless you, Jesus. Oh, I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. Oh, you're worthy of my praise. Oh, there's a blessing that comes if we don't get offended. I know this was a hard word this morning. Hard word to just get a hold of. The musicians and singers are fixing to come. Singers come. And I want them to close out this service. Before we do that, though, let me ask you something. Maybe you've been so offended. You don't have a relationship with the Lord, but you've been so offended. You know God has been dealing with you to place your faith in Jesus Christ. But you've been so offended by life. You've been so offended by things that happened to you. You feel like you got the raw end of the deal every time. And the very one that can help you, you've had anger towards. God, if you loved me, if you did really care about me, this wouldn't have happened and I wouldn't be going through all this that I'm going through. I see so many others, they're not doing, they, they weren't dealt the cards I was dealt, whatever. Put your arms around me. Lift your hands all over the building. But the very one that can help you is here in the house. He's here. He's here today. And he wants to mend your heart. Just give it to him. Give him your hurt. Give him your pain. Give him the trouble. Give it to him. I know it seems like if, if, if he really loved me, he wouldn't let me go through what I'm going through. But if all you've gone through leads you to the palm of his hand, then it's worth it. I want to ask you right now. I want to ask you right now. I want to ask you right now. You say, Pastor, I haven't. I haven't given my life to the Lord because I've been offended, because I've been mad. But today, but today you feel the Lord dealing with you. You feel the Spirit of God. You don't even know what to call it, but you know God's doing something right now. Would you step out in faith, ma'am? Sir, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. You can't be offended no more. You can't be offended no more. No, no. You can't be offended no more. There's a blessing that comes. I know. I know. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord God, she don't understand it all, but she's coming to you, God. She's kneeling at your feet right now, Lord. She's humbling her heart right now. God, she admits she don't understand it all, but she's going to trust you, God. And Lord, all her plans, all her dreams, everything that seems to be that. God, right now, you're beginning to build something beautiful. You're beginning to build something wonderful. You're going to build something great in her life, God. And I thank you now. I praise you. I glorify you. Talk to the Lord right now. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Anybody else? Some's already at the altar. I want you to ask the person to the left of you or to the right of you. Ask them right now. If you need to go down to the altar, I'll go down with you. Ask them right now. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, grown. The Lord loves you so much, son. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. It didn't go like we wanted it to go, God. But, Lord, we, want, we, we trust you. We trust you, Father. We trust you, Father. We trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Pour out your heart to the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else today? Don't leave here like you came. 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 Lift your hands all over this house. Father, we thank you. We bless you, God. We honor you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. God, thank you for Melissa, God. Everything may not went the way she wanted it to go, God. She may not understand some things or even why she has to deal with some of the things she deals with. But God, right now, Lord, she says, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. You keep, you keep hope. Alive, keep hope from the Sing that song. That's the one I want you to sing. If that ain't the right key, get the right key. Is that the right key? Put it in the right key. Sing it. You keep hope. of our lives we trust you Lord we honor you we bless you and Lord I want my life to be a testimony to those around me I want my life to be a light to this world that what I got is real when it's going good it's real when it seems to be going bad it's real Father I bless you I honor you I thank you. And there's a blessing that's following me. There's a blessing that's coming to those who will not be offended by 
love you. Lord, I bless you now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, can you put your hands together and give God praise? God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Be blessed.